here we are, day two in chemistry, and it is our math lesson. Um, one of the things that's going to be important today is making sure that you have your calculator and you know how to use it. And um, remember all the stuff we talked about yesterday, how you plug in scientific notation. So think about how you plug those values in. Okay, so we start with the beginning here, dimensional analysis. What this is, is just a way of solving problems. And the beauty to dimensional analysis is that you let the units guide you in how to solve the problem. So it's a beautiful thing. Once, once this clicks, you guys will really, truly enjoy this because it's going gonna, it's gonna to make things so much easier. You won't have to memorize formulas. You won't have to think about, well, should I divide? Should I multiply? The units are going to tell you what to to do. So if we look at some of our rules here, it says the first thing we're going to do is start with the given. So you read through your problem and you start with the given. If you happen to have more than one choice, then you are always going to use the one that has only one unit. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later because that's going to, we'll see in a couple problems that that's going to um, be a situation that we have to look at. Okay, the other thing is that we're going to need to identify the unit that we're looking for. I do that first. So, for example, in this problem right here, this first example, it says how many minutes are in 2.25 weeks. So that's the first thing I do. Now, let me kind of step back for a second and say that this first problem here, how many minutes are in 2.25 weeks, I have no doubt that every single one of you in this classroom could go through this type of calculation with, without me teaching you how to do this, right? You guys could solve this type of problem. I know you could. But what I want you guys to get into the habit of is setting the problems up the way that I'm setting them up. Because we're starting with things that are somewhat simple or maybe at least units that are really familiar to you guys. You, you guys know what that stuff is. Eventually, we're going to get to some units in chemistry that aren't so familiar. And so if you have that good background, that good process of how to solve a problem, then it makes it a whole bunch easier. So the process that we are going to follow is that we're going to set up our problems so that we create this path where that cancels out the units that are not wanted and it leaves the units that what that we're looking for. Again, it's that those units guide you in how to go about solving your problem. All right, with that said, first example, we know we're looking for minutes and we know that we're starting with 2.25 weeks. So we have to write down 2.25 weeks. I can go ahead if I want. I can put that over 1. And in fact, don't write the next thing that I'm going to do. Don't write this down yet. But in math, what you guys have done in the past is you might take something, some sort of quantity, and maybe multiply it times something else, and maybe multiply it times something else. Well, the way I'm going to set this up, mathematically the same thing is happening, but I'm not going to show all of those multiplication signs. That's kind of a little cumbersome for me. So instead, I am just going to take this line, this horizontal line, and bring it out, and I'm going to divide it by tiny little vertical lines. And when I say divide it, I shouldn't have used that word because we're really multiplying. I'm separating it by tiny little vertical lines. So I'm starting with that 2.25 weeks. I know that ultimately I want to get to minutes. That's why we write this here because that's really going to help guide us, especially when we get to some that are a little bit more challenging. So we want to go from weeks to minutes. I'm trying to get to a lower unit. I'm not trying to get to a higher one like years. I'm trying to get to a lower one. So what can you do? I know that we don't want weeks. I know I want that to cancel. So for that to cancel, where do I need to put it? In the bottom. So there, I know that mathematically that's going to cancel. Where can you go to? What do you know? Days. We know that for every one week, there are seven days. So now by doing that, I purposely made it to where my weeks canceled out then I've got it left with days. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. Not there yet. So I need to get days to cancel. In order to make that cancel, I know that I'm going to put days in the denominator. What can I go to? Hours. What number goes up top? 24. And then 1 goes with the days. 
Ooh, we're getting closer. We got it to hours. Last little step is pretty easy. We know we want to get rid of hours. So you think about making that cancel and you can go two minutes. So one hour equals 60 minutes. Before we solve this, let's look at, look at why this is valid. All I'm doing is taking this quantity, this number and this unit, and I'm multiplying it times one every single time. I'm multiplying it times one. I'm multiplying it times one. These are all equalities. Seven days is exactly the same thing as a week. 24 hours is exactly the same thing as a day. So all I'm doing every time is just multiplying it by one. So that's why it's valid to do this. We saw that our units canceled the way we liked. What are we left with? Minutes. Yippee. That's what we're looking for. So we know that we set it up right. And so now all we have to do is go ahead and plug that into the calculator. When you're plugging this in, remember the little lines, that's um, just separating things, but whenever it's in the numerator, you hit times, and whenever it's in the denominator, you hit divided by. So mathematically, these ones down here in the denominator don't really mean anything, but let's pretend that they did for a second. This is how I would plug this in. 2.25 times 7 times 24 times 60 divided by 1 divided by 1 divided by 1 divided by one, and that would give you your answer. Okay, so lots of time, and I've seen some people plugging away at their calculators. What'd you guys get in your calculator? Okay, awesome. 22680, that's what the calculator says. But then wait a minute, we have to think about yesterday. What'd we learn yesterday? S sig figs, sig figs. So what we need to do is go back to this guy. I'm not worried about the conversion factors or the counts or any of that that I used in the process. I am going back to my original given and I'm looking at that. How many significant figures is that? Three sig fig. So we're going to take this and round it to three sig figs and it becomes? 22700. Make sure you don't say 227. You got to add in the insignificant zeros as well. Okay, looks good. The last thing to get full credit, which of course everybody wants full credit, is that you have to add in the units as well. Okay, that's it. Not too bad, hopefully. Um, let's go ahead while we're here at the top of our page and just make a little comment about how we consider our significant figures. We are going to base um, answer on sig figs given in problem. You base your answer on the sig figs that are given in the problem. Okay. Next one. The trickiest thing about the next one is trying to figure out what to start with. Okay, so we read through here and we see that a student has a part-time job in which she works four-hour shifts and her pay is $5.25 an hour and she wants to know how many shifts she has to work. Let's go ahead and do that. How many shifts she has to work in order to earn $220. Got a lot of numbers there, but there's one that you should start with. And if you remember the rule up here, there's a couple different ways that we can look at this. You can think about it based on this rule. There's one that definitely has one unit, and the others you can think of them as being two units, or you can think of them as being conversion factors. And I'm going to start you off with this and tell you that something like this is a good a conversion factor. I could say one shift equals, what does one shift equal? Four hours. What's another thing that we can say? One hour equals, good, five dollars and twenty-five cents. So five point two five dollars. Okay, so those are conversion factors or maybe you're thinking about them as being two units. The two units here being um, hours per shift or dollars per hour. So you've got two units in each of those. What doesn't have two units? What, what did I not mention? 
the 220. So this is what we're going to start with. And notice how it's written. It's 220 point. Just a little weird. But you look at that and you think to yourself, aha, I know that means when I round at the very end, I'm going to make it three sigmas. Okay, so that's what we're starting with. If it bugs you, if you don't like this empty space right here, you can always throw in a one. doesn't matter. Okay, starting with dollars. That's not what we want. We want to make our dollars go away. That just doesn't sound right. Nobody wants to make their dollars go away. But in this example, we want to make our dollars go away. So we're going to put that in the bottom, and that's going to cancel out. What can we do? What can From there, what can we go to? Hours. Do you see what I'm looking at here? You're looking at that conversion factor. So you can go from dollars to hours. What number goes with the hours on top? One. And the 5.25 goes with the dollars. So now we've got it to hours. Yeah, we're not there yet. That's not what we want. So we need to make those go away. What can we go to? Shifts because we have this conversion factor. So shifts goes on top. Don't do all this work. Don't get it to this point and then make the mistake of saying something like there are four shifts in one hour. It's the other way around. So make sure you get the numbers to go correctly with the units. So one shift equals four hours. Okay. So everything cancels except shifts. Yay, we know we set it up right. So all we have to do is plug it in. And in this case, you're saying 220 divided by 5.25 divided by 4. And you get a big number. What did you say? Awesome. Okay, so I'm hearing rounding already. 10.5 is what you would write down in your calculator. You probably got something like 10.4761948. So this really big number, which of course you would never write all of that information down, is your final answer. Maybe you want to write that down as part of your work. Maybe you do, just to um, show that. But our final answer is going to be 10.5, and the units are shifts. Okay, question. Yeah, a minute. Okay, so I did just have a question about... Hey, if we were in math class, maybe this is how we'd do it. Or in reality, in real life, this person, this girl probably isn't allowed to work 10 and a half shifts. Her boss is a real stickler for this, and maybe she has to work 11 shifts. What I'm interested in is the significant figures on this for the rounding. So what I'd really prefer, and we're going to see this in the upcoming examples as well when we look at money. It's going to have some questions about money. We all know it goes out to the hundredths place, but if it's three sig figs, you know, if, it, if it's asking it to go out to the tenths place, then I want it to go out to the tenths place. Just like here, I'd prefer to see 10.5. You know, if, I, if, you, if you showed 10.5 and then showed that you rounded it up to 11 because that's, it's a whole shift, I'd probably give you credit for that if I was able to follow along with your work. Okay, good question. Um, all right, moving on to the next one. This one's actually pretty atypical of questions that we would see in chemistry. But it says, if you used 16 gallons when driving 376 miles, what was your gas mileage over that distance? And in order to be able to do this, we need to know what that means. Mileage. What's mileage? Miles per gallon. We've all watched enough car commercials out there to know that we could write it as MPG, but I really don't want us to. I want us to really make a distinction between our numerator and denominator. So we're going to say miles over gallons. That way you keep it clear, your numerator and your denominator. Okay, so this is, again, pretty atypical because we see that we've got miles and gallons that are given to us. So all we're doing is just plugging it in to make sure that our miles are on the top and our gallons are on the bottom. So I'm going to say 376 miles over 16 gallons. Is that pretty good gas mileage? Not bad.
bad in the city, maybe. But okay, what'd you get? Twenty-three point five miles per gallon. Um. So if I were to go back here, just to remind us, our final answer was based on this number of significant figures. Our final answer was based on this number of significant figures. Now in this problem, we've got both of these guys that have equal weight. One's not weighted, not one's not a given, and the other, wait, one's not the given and the other isn't. That didn't phrase very well, but you guys know what I mean. They both have equal weight, that I have three sig figs in each of them. So because of that, I'm going to round my answer to three sig figs. If I had one that was two sig figs and the other that was three, how would you round your answer? To two, because you'd always do it to the least number of sig figs. Okay, next one. At the above gas mileage, so we are using this information. How far can you travel? It just says how far. What do you think the units should be for that? Miles. Just based on the other stuff that's given to you, you just would assume it's miles, not inches or something like that. So how far can you travel on a tank of 22 gallons? So this is the information that's given to us. These two things right here. Out of those two things, which one do you want to start with? 22 gallons, because it is the one unit. So we come back here, we start with our 22 gallons. We don't want it in gallons. Make it cancel. What can you go to? Miles. So the 23.5 goes with the miles. That's for every one gallon. So you do some math into three significant figures. What'd you get? Okay, good. 517 miles. Okay. So far, so good? All right, next one, it's going to be a little bit tougher because we have some other numbers in here as well. It says, again, it says at the same mileage, so I'm looking at this information here again, how many dollars, so there's our question mark, we're going to dollars, will you spend on gasoline, gasoline during a 658 mile trip if the price of gasoline is $3.35 per gallon? Out of those three things that we just pointed out, only one of them has just one unit. Good, so I'm hearing lots of people say it out there. 658. So 658 miles. That's what we're going to start with. Because here we've got dollars per gallon, and here we've got miles per gallon. So we start with that. We know we don't want it in miles, so let's make that go away. Thinking about your two other conversions that you've got there, what could you go to for miles? You could go to what? Gallons. Good. So you're looking at this up here. So we can go to gallons. What number goes with the gallons? What number goes up top? One. One. What about the bottom? 23.5. So let me just point this out. This is why it was really so important for us to start with our one unit. Because we didn't know with this unit right here, this conversion, we didn't know if it was going to be numerator, denominator flipped as is or flipped. It ends up that we had to flip it and put gallons on top and miles on the bottom. But by going through dimensional analysis, it walks us through that. So it just leads us along, and we don't really have to think about it. We just make things cancel. Okay, so I've got it in gallons. Nah, that's not what I want. I want to get to dollars. So I want to get rid of gallons. What can I go to? Dollars. We can see that right here in this one. So what number goes up top? Okay, 3.35 for every one gallon. So you always look back and make sure everything canceled out correctly. Got dollars on top. That's exactly what I was looking for, so I know I set it up right. 
and you go ahead and do the math. And this is an example, like we were talking about with the shifts, where we're looking at a dollar amount. But what would you say the answer is on this? Excellent. 93.8 dollars. Okay, you guys are now pros at dimensional analysis. We're just going to throw in some metric stuff now. Are you feeling okay with this stuff? Yeah? Okay, so uh, metric system. There are four unit conversions, four prefixes that you guys have to have memorized. And they are listed right here. Maybe write yourself a note to memorize them, put a star by it, whatever you need to do. And the way these prefixes are written here, it's not my favorite. I actually, my brain prefers to think in terms of positive exponents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of rewrite them the way I think about them, but you're welcome to use them this way as well. It doesn't matter which way you do it. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to show an example with meters, okay? Because we could use these prefixes with any base unit, right? meters, grams, liters, doesn't matter. So the first one, I'm looking at an example with kilo. So I'm going to think about the relationship between meters and kilometers. Which one's bigger? Kilometer. So I'm going to use a one with the big thing. One kilometer equals how many meters? A thousand. Okay, so we just did that first one, which really wasn't any different. What we're saying is that a kilo has the prefix of a thousand. That's what we just showed there. But now when we get to something like centi, what's bigger, a meter or a centimeter? A meter. So let's go ahead and say one meter equals how many centimeters? How many of the smaller things are in a meter? 100. So I personally prefer to think about 100 centimeters being in one meter as opposed to uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 2 meters being in a centimeter. But however you guys want to think about it, you're welcome to do it that way. Okay, so we just did that one. Um, milli, so we're looking at meters and millimeters. Which one's bigger? Meter, so 1 meter, 1,000 of those little things, the little millimeters. And then the last one that we're looking at it has, has the prefix micro. So it's a micrometer or a micrometer. And we know that a meter is much bigger than a micrometer. In this case, one meter equals, how many do you think it's going to be? I'm not sure I heard it. It's a million. There are six zeros in this. And the way you write that, it looks like a cursive U. Okay, so that's just another way of thinking about those metric prefixes, but you do need to be able to make those conversions. And we'll do a few examples here. Okay, so the first one says, how many centimeters are in 3.25 kilometers? And I know there are going to be some people that are just tempted to try and move the decimal and just kind of make it happen. And you're probably pretty adept at it, and you could, you could do that. But for this first unit, I really want to see your work on it. Eventually, maybe I'll let you kind of slip away without showing a conversion between, you know, a meter and um, centimeters or something like that. But uh, right now, let's make sure we show the work. I do not know a conversion between kilometers and centimeters. So what could we go to? We could get rid of our kilometers and go to what? Meters. We know that the kilometer is the big one. So I'm going to say one of these big things, how many smaller things? 1,000. Well, now, if we stopped right now, we would have it in meters. So let's keep going and get rid of those meters and take it to centimeters. Where does the one go? With the meter and then 100 with the centimeter. And that's all there is to it. So, um, it's funny, I always see people grab for their calculators at this point, but you don't even need a calculator on this because you could figure this out. Just look at those zeros. How many places are you going to move that decimal? Five. Good. So it becomes, we're going to move it five decimals to the right, 
You can plug that in, but you should be able to reason through this and just make sure it's a reasonable answer as well. So it becomes 325000. Did I do that? Yes. And that's going to be in centimeters. Since we naturally we have three sig figs right here, we should naturally have three sig figs right here. Don't go try and you know throw in a decimal point or something. That's just going to ruin it. It's going to make make it incorrect. Okay, last one on just metric. Here it says how many milliliters are in 5.67 liters. Easy cheesy. Um, this is just an example to remind you that it doesn't matter. It, it can be meters, it can be grams, it can be liters. It can be any unit that we can throw this, these prefixes in with. So if we want to get rid of liters and go to milliliters, we know that conversion. We know this is the big one. This is the little one that has a thousand in there. So it becomes five, six, seven, zero milliliters. Okay, here's a silly little cartoon. I'll read it to you if you can't read it in the back. It says, my uncle was a real metric system nut. Well, how do you mean? You give him an, hour, an inch and he'd take 1.6 kilometers. So, nobody laughed. Not one laugh in the whole room. That's okay. That's okay. The whole, you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Get it? So he'll take 1.6 kilometers. Okay, they're laughing. Deep inside, they're laughing right now way deep inside. Okay, these are the last two problems that we have, and it is at this point that I'm going to pause this video, and somebody from the class is actually going to do this problem. Okay, so now it is magically finished. Andrew did a great job outside of the fact that he wrote with his left hand, but other than that, he did a fabulous job. So you can see that we've got um, this number in our calculator, that we came up with, and this is going to be kind of important for this next one, because the next question says, how many centimeters are in that same starting value? So I'm just going to quickly continue with this and say that we started, actually I'm going to rewrite it, we started with this many miles, now we want to take it all to the centimeters, but if you've got this in your calculator, keep it in your calculator, because there's no reason to punch it all in again. So we're getting rid of our miles and going to feet. We are getting rid of feet and going to inches. Now that last little step is to take it to centimeters. Something worth noting is that um, whenever you have a metric to English or English to metric conversion, that information will always be given to you. You don't have to memorize it. You'll probably end up memorizing this because you'll use it quite occasionally, but that is given to you. You don't have to memorize that. However, you do have to memorize these guys. Okay, so last little step. We've got it as inches. We want to get rid of inches and go to centimeters. So really, when you do this, if you, if you were continuing from the previous example, all you'd have to do is say times 2.54 with what's in your calculator already. That's preferable as opposed to using your already rounded number. I'd rather you use what's in your calculator. And with that said, our answer is, our rounded three sig fig answer is 591000, and that is centimeters. And we're uh, almost done here. Just quick little reminder, base your sig figs on the given number. We said that earlier, but it bears repeating. And um, that is it. You guys have some homework over this stuff with some conversions that are given. And second day of chemistry, great job. You guys did awesome.